In this video, I'll be talking about the differences between living or retiring in the Philippines or Thailand. I've spent a lot of time in both countries. I've lived in Bangkok over a couple of British winters, but I've spent more time living in Cebu City. Make sure you stay until the end of the video where I'll score the countries against each other on specific criteria. It's difficult to actually compare cultures saying that one is better than the other, so I'm comparing the street life and how I feel whilst living in the city. In Asia there's so much life on the streets and I spend a lot of time walking which I feel is the only way to get to know a city by pounding the streets and discovering the lay of the land. Both cities offer equally stimulating experiences. I was brought up a Catholic and with Philippines predominantly a Catholic country I should feel more in tune being in Cebu. I visited churches here but I identify more with the Buddhist faith and would spend a lot of time sitting and reflecting at the Golden Mount Temple in Bangkok. At 8am and 6pm each day the Thai national anthem would play in parks and public spaces and people would stand still for a minute to respect their king and country. Foreigners are prohibited from owning land in both the Philippines and Thailand but can legally own a residence. The Philippine Condominium Act allows foreigners to own condo units as long as 60% of the building is owned by Filipinos. In Thailand, foreigners can own up to 49% of the total saleable area of a condominium project, with the remaining 51% can be acquired under leasehold ownership. Personally, I wouldn't consider buying property in a country apart from my own, as you never know what might happen on foreign soil. Condos in Thailand are maintained much better than the Philippines and are of much higher standard. Don't miss out on quality broadcasting. Please like and subscribe to Big World Cinema. Thank you. Asians love their malls, which are great places to escape from the heat. A mall's a mall in my opinion, soulless places are not worth making comparison. There are food options galore in both cities where you could dine out at a different restaurant, cafe or street stall each night for a year at least. Both cities also have food courts at the malls, offering dozens of choices at reasonable prices. Although a lot of the items on Filipino menus will be out of stock, sir. One of the positives about staying in one city for a long time is being able to, to negotiate longer rental contracts to save money. My average monthly cost of living in Bangkok was £725 or $860 per calendar month as opposed to my monthly cost of living in Cebu which averages at £525 or $620. A Philippine tourist visa costs £21 or $25 per calendar month. But after staying two months you need to pay for an ACR card which costs an additional £42 or $50 and is valid for a year. The Thai tourist visa costs £25 or $30 per calendar month for three months, but after three months you need to do a border run. The Philippines however is more tourist friendly where you're able to stay for three years on a tourist visa without needing to leave. If you're over 50, you can apply for a Special Residence Retirees Visa, SRRV. That's if you have a pension of $800 per calendar month and deposit $10,000 into a Filipino bank. You also have to pay $1,500 to process the application. A one-year retirement visa for Thailand for those aged 50 or over is a lot cheaper. Costs only £50 or 
$55 per year. But you must have at least 800,000 Thai baht in a Thai bank account, which equates to £19,000 or $22,000. Or you must have a monthly income or pension of at least 65,000 Thai baht, which equates to 1,500 pounds or $1,800. Or you must have an annual income, pension or money in a Thai bank, which comes to a combined total of at least 800,000 Thai baht. I would see entertaining a retirement visa in either of these countries as a complete faff and would just carry on getting tourist visas. I've dated both Thais and Filipinas, which I've mostly connected with on dating apps. I've never met anyone on the street in Bangkok, whereas in Cebu you're able to start a conversation with a girl on the street and expect them to speak good in English. When I hit 50 back in the UK, I was suddenly invisible but age gap relationships are acceptable in both countries and women don't really care how old you are. When I walk down the street in Cebu, I get looks from females of all ages with dating options endless. The Philippines is your oyster. Je suis une rockstar. My only reservation, and I need to be diplomatic how I say this, is that Thai women age better. I dated a 36 year old Thai followed by a 38 year old who both could have been mistaken for 20 year olds. One of them I nicknamed she's in the army now as she worked for the Thai military. Thai genes are incredible however I don't really trust Thai women I've heard horror stories of them abandoning loved ones when the money runs out or the man gets sick. The Thai women I dated always seemed to mislay their purses when the bill arrived. She's in the army now, said she couldn't contribute to our meals out as she was saving to buy a condo. I find Filipinas much more generous, trustworthy and loving. My previous Filipina girlfriend, even though her teaching salary wasn't great, would always buy us meals. They may have trust issues, are madly jealous and clingy, but are totally loyal. Don't miss out on quality broadcasting. Please like and subscribe to Big World Cinema. Thank you. If I don't want to walk and I need to go somewhere further, I use public transport. In Cebu there are taxis, buses, jeepneys and tricycles. Whereas in Bangkok, public transportation is more expensive. There are taxis, buses, tuk-tuks, ferries, overhead monorail, and underground train system. There's also a bus app monitoring when your next bus is going to arrive at your stop. I'm not much of a bar stall, although I did like going to bars to watch the live premiership football games of which there are hundreds of choices in Bangkok. I'm also a fan of a beer in the sunshine and would regularly catch a bus and ferry to Asiatic for a sundowner on the river. Cebu doesn't have that. There are a few rooftop bars, places to drink, but the option of al fresco dining and drinking really can't compare with Bangkok's extensive social scene. Bangkok has a great art scene with a number of art galleries and changing exhibitions throughout the year. One of the biggest things I miss living in Cebu is not having the opportunity to see any artwork. Temporary art exhibitions take place in the shopping malls displaying work from amateur artists. There doesn't appear to be any large galleries or exhibition spaces showing modern art. There's an abundance of greenery in Bangkok. I'd either go to the gym or do a workout in the local park where there were free exercise machines. I love doing a workout outside in the sunshine. It was a great start to the day. Many people were in the park jogging, 
and there were a handful of Thai guys who'd meet each day at Lumpini Park who spoke little English but tried their best to communicate with me. I didn't go there for a week and when I returned one of the guys made a friendly gesture as if to say, oh you are still alive then. Thais tend to be more physically active. My previous Filipina girlfriend didn't exercise as she said it was tiring. In Cebu, parks are in short supply in the city. There's Plaza Independencia or a few memorial cemeteries where you can jog, but nothing like in Bangkok. In both countries, the sun shines all day. Bangkok has a heavy rainy season from May to October when 90% of the annual rainfall occurs. It doesn't really rain much between November to April. However, in Cebu, it rains for a number of days each month, the wettest months being June to December. Rain normally comes during the night, unlike in Bangkok, where the downpours during the rainy season are quite unpleasant during the day. Due to the intensity of the rain in Bangkok, I, I assumed it received more rainfall, but it actually rains more in Cebu. In Bangkok, I was frequently sick. I loved exercising outdoors, but when the air pollution was so bad, I should have remained indoors. The air feels a lot cleaner in Cebu. During my time in Bangkok, I didn't really meet many locals, apart from meeting my landlords and gym instructors, but didn't really spend much time talking with them. Filipinos are a different entity which makes living in the Philippines so appealing. The majority of people you meet are warm, welcoming and friendly. People are keen to engage with you here, but the language barrier in Thailand makes things more difficult. The fact that you're able to have a conversation in English with the majority of people you come across makes the Philippines quite a unique option. As a single guy living alone, the ability to have conversations on a daily basis with the girl on the checkout counter at Metro or random people you meet in the street deters that feeling of loneliness. You don't get that in Thailand where only the minority speak English. To feel a part of Thai culture, you really need to try and learn some of the language. I guess that's it. Have I missed anything? Right, the results. Thailand may tick more boxes, but the people and the ability to have a conversation each day in English are priceless and hold great value. Anyway, if you like the video, please could you like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Take care, everyone. Big one, cinema. Yes, I'm on board. I'm on the side of the house.